when it comes down to it, martial arts brings more than just learning how to survive physically. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 548, with today's guest, Professor Zahelia Anderson. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for Martial Arts Radio. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. I love the martial arts. I love traditional martial arts. And that's why everything we do here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists all over the world. If you want to know more about what we're doing, how we're working towards those goals, you can check out whistlekick.com. It's our online home. You're going to find our store on there. If you make a purchase of anything, use the code PODCAST15. Get to 15% off. Helps us know that this show leads to some sales and you know justifies the expense. If you want to check out the website for this show, a whole different website, Whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. We bring you two episodes every week, and the show is to connect. It's to educate. It's to entertain the traditional martial artists throughout the world. You know, we get a, get a little more specific with our goals here. And we put a lot of work into it. And if you want to help the show and the work that we're doing, you can do a whole bunch of things. You can make a purchase. Like I said, you could share an episode. Follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. You could tell a friend about what we're doing. You could pick up one of our books or our programs. You could leave a review somewhere or support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. It's the place to go for that. You can support us monthly with as little as $2. $5 gets you some exclusive audio. $10 gets you exclusive video. And it goes up from there. You know, I kind of take the easy way out in titling these episodes because when we have a guest on, it's... It's their name. It's their title. It's their name. And that makes it easy to find them. And it makes it easy for us to, to do the back end stuff. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't tell you the theme. It doesn't tell you what the episode is about beyond the who. And if I was to change that suddenly right now for this episode, today's episode would be, wow, because that's what it is. Professor Anderson comes on and tells a story. And we've heard a lot of stories on this show. Most of them have been good. Some of them have been great. And this one is in that camp. And that's not to take anything away from the others who have come on this show. And you'll see what I mean when you hear it. This story is different. It is unlike other stories. And yet, at the same time, it's incredibly relatable. It's about choosing whether or not to follow your path. It's about being tested. It's about going through the door, not knowing what's on the other side. And we get to go along for the ride. So enjoy. Professor Anderson, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Greetings. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for being here. We, uh, you know, li listeners, we, um, before I get started with, with all, almost every guest, you know, sometimes we roll like immediately into the conversation, but more often than not, you know, we have a, we have a chat and, you know, we've just been chatting the last few minutes and uh, I, got, I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling here. I've got a feeling. You've got stories, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> There's some stories See? in there. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. I, and you know, you know, what's really funny is that a lot of martial artists don't realize they have stories and then they have stories. So you knowing you have stories tells me you probably have tons of them and who knows what ones we're going to unpack. And I, I like to start in kind of a simple way, a, a, a way that gives us some context. And we're going to spider off from here. And it's a, it's a straightforward question. And that is, how'd you get started as a martial artist? I got started in the martial arts due to my martial arts instructor, who happens to be my father. <laughs> mm. So... I guess, family yes. So it's kind of like, I guess you can call me a dojo baby. Being raised and, and being in the environment as a child brought me into just adaptation, you know, pretty swiftly. And just following along, being with Pops and everybody else, just, it was just a part of life. It was part of the lifestyle already as a young child. But when I wanted to actually do it for myself and not just, oh, let me just go hang out with daddy, you know, da-da-da type of thing. 
when it really clicked in for myself was when puberty started. You know, like the whole vibe was different once um, I became a woman and life changed drastically. So what was that like around end of junior high, going into high school type of feel? And high school hit and I've always been a, a mellow mood, um, mysterious young girl. I never belonged in any groups like cliques, if you will, during those school eras. I've I've known everyone. I've always said hello to everyone, every clique, if you will. I was never uh, a part of anything. I was everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So you, you either knew me or you didn't know me. And for the ones who didn't know me, um, wanted to try to get to know me. So these girls tried to jump me in the bathroom. And I was like, yo, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Why? Why? That, that's the number one question. I'm 40 years old now. And sometimes I ask myself, yo, why? You know, like. You never found out. They just, they just never didn't like found it. out, you know, and it's just, ah. you know, and then you got to think about we're all going through puberty <laughs> at that time. Mm. We're all trying to figure out what's happening with us is, and being in school and being around the opposite sex and things like that and how they're acting towards us as girls and, and them as boys. And, you know, do you like me circle? Yes or no. Kind of just all that puppy love <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and, you know, you never know. It could have been, I'm a tomboy as well. I'm a guy's girl, you know, so <laughs> maybe you know I don't know so it happened and they weren't successful and it happened so fast but yet so slow you know so it was like you like you run it back in your head like what just happened you know and and you just look on the ground you're like oh she's out she's holding her arm let me get the hell out of here So it went okay. Yeah. Or I guess we should say it could have gone a lot worse for you. Is what it, it could have gotten here. a lot worse, you know, because there was Ooh. another situation where where I live. Um, I, I live in the east side of Long Beach, California, the LBC. Mm. And uh, I was a track athlete as well, track and field. And that's we're known for academics and sports. And at Poly, you know, when you ran track and you played football, like, you know, that was a good time. And um, coming home from track, being on the bus, I guess I was mistaken for being a part of a gang or something, but I didn't claim anything. I ain't from no set. I'm from nowhere. But these girls just didn't want to listen or didn't want to, you know, they're just trying to try me or just get into some trouble, you know. So this was a two-day situation. <laughs> The second mm. time they came for me, it was like, okay, they're not coming to ask questions. It's either happening or it's not. So I just hiked up my backpack and just got ready for it. You know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And then they came for me at the bus stop. And I had another fight there right in front of the VIP parking lot. Good timing. The universe brought the city bus right along at the right time. <laughs> With my track skills, I ran right up there after I whooped the bus. <laughs> <laughs> the bus driver looked at me was like okay go ahead get on like she can just see it in my in my eyes she can feel my vibe see the blood on my shirt like okay come on just forget about the bus fare type of thing you know and that's when I said okay me being in the martial arts just to be in it is already a divine majestic ancestral vibe that's within me right now for me to wanted to get into myself that's when another portal opened because then I really not that I wasn't a student but when I knew I wanted to be myself and, and, and please for self-love instead of please for parental love you understand the difference that's yeah. when everything started to click in and that's when my martial arts really started to take off for me as a young woman living in the east side of Long Beach. It sounds like you've like you picked up something along the way, you know, hanging around the dojo and and your, your father must have worked with you at some point. Oh, yeah. There aren't a whole lot of people who just stumble into these these fights. And, and with both of them, it was it wasn't just one on one. It was multiple people <laughs> in you and you coming out victorious both times. So either. You know, you 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 were 
you know, the reincarnation of, of Ali or you had some training. I did. My father, you know, we would do things in the house. You know, it wasn't a normal house. Like I could be sitting watching, you know, a different world or the Cosby show. And he'll come out and know we're like, hey, let me show you this move. And I'm just, you know, I thought I'm having a relaxing time. He'll come around and boom and just lock me up, give me the knee kill and just tie a toast me. I'll be like, ah, okay. <laughs> Good times. All right. And I go back to watching, you know, Rudy and okay good thanks love you you know but that was the house you know and I and those are the times that I remember I remember the house the house calls if you will um of course I remember being on the map but it's it's those one-on-one things that you don't get let's say if he wasn't my father instructor if he was just my instructor so growing up in in the house with a martial artist is very fun (laughs) and scary at the same time (laughs) I mean, having flashbacks like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, you know, you, you, we, I'm sure in your house as well, you have some nice tools as far as, you know, blades and Iwadi sticks and bow staffs yeah. and things. So us as children, you know, seeing those things instead of playing with Barbies, I'm playing with, you know, swords and Iwadis, you know. <laughs> so it, it's a different life, but I wouldn't change it. If I went back in time, I would I would want everything the same because it made me who I am now. And I'm very appreciative and I'm very grateful for my parents and my siblings. I'm the youngest out of four and I have two older brothers and a sister and they've studied as well, but I'm the one that actually kept with it. So mm-hmm. in me being a female, when we were in the dojo, I was on the mat with nothing but males. It was a house full of men, and I was the only female. So that was another journey in its own course. For sure. Yeah. This, this upbringing with, you know, bringing the dojo in home and, and having these, we'll call them impromptu lessons. How much of that was your father let's say sharing something he was passionate about with his children and how much of it was preparing you for an environment that you've, you've described as being fairly violent. It was both. He, he prepared, he wanted to be with us because we are his children and he has got a lot of love and respect for us. And he wanted us to be prepared for the streets. Now, yes, Long Beach, California, it has its yin and yang. It has its good and its bad. And I believe every city and every state has that yin and yang aspect. I just happen to be, I, we lived in a good neighborhood, but the school's in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, that was my yin and yang. Like I lived in a nice neighborhood, but my yeah. school was in the hood, you know? So, yeah, you know, violence is, it's everywhere and hopefully it'll mellow down. But I mean, speaking as right now in this current time, it's actually rising up to all all time high, which is horrible. So, you know, we just all have to remember that love really conquers it. Love really, really trumps hate. Love, love will put respect on life more. So my father knew that he was preparing me for the future because him being a man himself, him, um, we're from the East Coast, actually. You're in New England, right? I was born, I was I born in Brooklyn. So we're, we're, okay, we're not too far. yeah, so we're um, New York natives and we've moved down to oh, way over here to California when I was, when I was a baby. <clears throat> so... I guess with his upbringing, he wanted to be able to have us maybe a little easier life than what he had. So he um, showed us love by preparing us and getting us ready for war. Mm. I, Is that where he learned martial arts? Yes, he was in New he York. Started, yes, he started in New York with the founder of the system that we are. Um, bloodlined into, which is San Lucas Ru Jiu Jitsu under Dr. Moses Powell. Oh, yeah. I know that. Name. Yes, Dr. Moses Powell is the creator and yeah. founder of the system that I am. I love and I'm passionate and would ride and die for San Lucas Ru Jiu Jitsu. You talked about your 
your siblings, they trained, and yet you were the one who stuck with it. What, what was different? What was different for you or the way it was presented to you or different for them? You know, it, it, it's not uncommon that in a family that grows up training that only some remain training. You know, I've known plenty of families. Like oh, that. yeah. But I'm wondering why it stuck for you. Um, I believe it stuck for me because I've. Um, for me, like, I'm, I don't know about my siblings, because we're even though we're family, we're all our own individual. So I don't I'm not sure why they didn't stick with it. But for me, I stuck with it because, again, I got battle tested and then I knew I really needed it. <laughs> Mm. You know, when you get battle tested, that, that wakes up some more senses, you know. But I also, it felt good while I was doing it. This is before, you know, even when I was when I was younger, because um, I have a background in dance. So okay. I guess it was it just flowed. It just flowed with me, just like if I was in a dance class, I'm in a martial art class. I ran track. I, I was in a choir like I, my parents had us everywhere doing so many things, you know, so I just I, I. And a part of me just want to stick with it to, to keep having the relationship with my father. Mm. And that's. That's, you know, that's what it was, just to keep, because that's what brought us together. That we can, we can talk about that. That, that was our conversation. That was, that Tell was us our about giggles, your father. that was our laughs, you know. Um, yeah. His name is Professor Urban. He is currently a eighth don in Sanducas Jiu Jitsu. He currently lives back in Brooklyn, New York. And... Yeah, he's my father. <laughs> <laughs> Are you close? Um, yes, we were we were really close. We were really close to when he moved back to Brooklyn, it, it really broke my heart. Mm. So, you know, it's stages of healing, you know, so but things happen. Life life happens. Change is, is good or bad, but it's change, and you're just going to have to adapt to it. <laughs> Adjust <laughs> and adapt. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell myself lately through all the, the obstacles that have came in my life these, fat, these past few months um, during the pandemic. And, you know, I'm sure with you guys as well, locking down the dojo and, and not being able to train and and for 25 years we've had our dojo open we've never closed on holidays i've never closed it on holidays or anything because the dojo is very diverse and everybody has different walks of life and not everybody celebrates the same holidays or does the same thing so i always kept it open for those people. so the the first time that we've ever closed <laughs> 25 years was march 14th 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. What did that feel it like? It felt freaking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it still feels horrible because, again, we've never, you know, and so I took over the dojo in 2010. I became sole proprietor. And I just have to backtrack a little bit so you can understand why yeah, I say what I'm, do what I'm doing now. Um, my parents divorced in 2010 and I, I stepped up to the plate because I wanted to keep the dojo open. So I tried to maintain it, not having any background in business, not having any, no nada, <laughs> you know, seeing how things were flowing while he was there, you know, but never really got taught, just uh, absorbing everything. You understand? So when it was actually time for me to, to sit behind the desk, I was learning as I as I went. And unfortunately, when my father left, a lot of the students left. So I had to start from the top. And I still I can't tell you why they left when when he left, but it is what it is. It was what it was. So I had to rebuild. I had to start from the ground up and I still had to pay rent. <laughs> I had to pay rent with no ink, with nothing coming in. You understand? <laughs> so talk about hustle mode. Talk about trying to make it work. 
And I did. I did because I never gave up. I never gave up. Even through all the times people trying to cut me down, um, you know, stomp on my name, just not believe in me, like all of that. I switched it into drive. I switched it into more ambition. I, I just, I just flipped the script. You know what I'm saying? To and, and I yeah. and I just did. It. I did it all on my own. I did it all on my own, and I just never gave up. And then in due time, a couple years went by. When I had no students, then I had like five, then I had one, and it was just up and down like a yo-yo. And through all that time, I just was still the string. I'm not going to disconnect from the yo-yo. You understand what I'm saying? Even though I'm busy yeah. and about to throw up <laughs> on this yo-yo ride, I'm still going to ride. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I look up. I got students. They're paying tuition because <laughs> that's a big, you know, over here, you know, and the ones who didn't, couldn't pay or didn't pay, I still allow them to come in because money is always going to be an issue. You understand? We got to be able to work with each other. And I, till, till now, I've never made money for myself. It all went back into the dojo. You know what I'm saying? So when it became a home, it became a safe house for others. I'm working with kids who was, who was, borderline getting ready to go into duty i'm working with kids whose parents are abusive to them but they telling me that they hard-headed so they need some lessons when it's actually the parent that needs some lessons you know what i'm saying so i I work with children you know i don't like to label but just to explain to you so you guys can um understand the vibe i've worked with children with down syndrome with ad wheelchair you know just Anybody who, everybody can learn self-defense. It depends on the teacher and how they can provide it for you. And I've been blessed to have the creativity to be that instructor to provide for all. I've taught um, the LBGTQ community where I had private lessons because they didn't feel safe being in the general because some were transgender, things like that. You know, I'm open to everybody is what I'm trying to explain. So when March 14th happened with the lockdown, it, it, it pierced my soul because some people came to the dojo to be safe. Now they now they at home. You know, you never know what other people's houses is like, <laughs> you know, how people are living. You know, and I knew a couple of people who were not living so well in their home and I couldn't protect them. I couldn't provide for them for the times that they were at the dojo. That was me trying to help them to give them a little fresh, you know, fresh breath of fresh air at that time that they was with me, you know, and the lockdown brought everybody home. So I lost some students during the lockdown and I tried to transfer everybody over to the matrix, to the zoom. And my family and I, we live off the grid. We didn't have no cable, no Wi-Fi. Like, that's not us. Like, so when my cubs, we have two cubs. Um, she's 12 and he's 10. And when they had to switch over to the virtual, we had to get the Wi-Fi. So I bought like more salt lamps around <laughs> my house to balance out the frequencies, if you will. Okay. So that's the kind of house that my tribe and I are in. So. I said, okay, well, we got the, we got it in here. Let's 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 try to bring the students in here. Let me figure out how to press these buttons and get this Zoom thing going on, you know. And so then I had mm-hmm. us into the Zoom for the ones who could be in Zoom. Not everybody had a computer. Not everybody has a Chromebook. Not every, you know what I'm saying? So the ones who were able to come into the Zoom, then we had class. Then it's, then it's like, okay, how am I going to teach up in this matrix? Well, I can't even touch you. You know, us as martial artists, it's all about the touch. It's all about the touch, and I can't even reach you through this matrix. What? Okay, so my thought, I said, okay, everybody's sitting down all day trying to figure out what to do with life. So we're going to do some, like, martial art aerobics, like old school Taibo Billy Blank stuff. You know what I mean? just to get the blood flowing and get us moving around again. Cause that COVID-15 was in full effect. People were gaining a lot of weight, you know? So I, I made a point to when they zoom in with me, 
to get the blood sweating, to get the heart pumping. I invited the parents. I said, everybody better be in that living room and we better be working when you're with me. I don't care. All I'm asking is for donations. All I could ask is for donations. We, I don't know what everybody's story is. It's what, what's this right now, October? Okay, I'm yeah. still waiting for unemployment. Okay, just to tell you a little bit about my story. <laughs> so I don't know what other people is going. So I can't say, oh, you have to pay full tuition for a half a class in the matrix, you know? But what I could say is if you can give what you can, just make a donation. Because mind you, I don't know what their walks of life are, but my walk of life, I have to try to eat and provide for my family as well. But I, it's just not in my heart. To 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 ask you to ask for full price, I I, I can't do it. I couldn't do it. And as I've heard plenty of others say at, at times, I'd rather have them in the dojo not paying than not in the dojo not exactly. paying. Exactly, exactly. When it comes down to it, martial arts brings more than just learning how to survive physically. It's it's mental first. It's love second, it's passion, it's drive. It, it builds you confidence. So, I mean, I have students in here that, that are so surprised with themselves with the moves that they're doing that they never even thought that they could ever do. It never just it never crossed their mind. You know, so you, you open this other thing for them and, and, they, and you can see, the, see it in their eyes. Their eyes get all bright and big and lit up and see like a, a, a whole face of, I did it, you know, of success. And, and that's the reward. That's the reward for me as an instructor, for me as a martial artist, is it, it, when it clicks, when it clicks for them, you know? Yeah. So here we fast forward into May 31st. We've already been on COVID lockdown, right? <clears throat> already trying to make it work. We're all in survival mode, trying to make things happen. And here come uh, another case of rioting due to police police brutality for people of color, people who look like me, right? And this has been going on since (laughs) the beginning of slavery, okay? So it's not that it's anything new. This is just a continuation of hell, right? So I guess the George Floyd incident of him being um, in the situation that he was in which was, you know, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to even be a part of that. It was, it wasn't good what happened to that brother. And I'm very sorry for him and his family. And so that started another uprising. And that uprising was, I, I'm assuming, one of the biggest uprising, uprisings yet, because I believe every state had some type of riot or uprising or protest happening. So when you have protests, there's things that come along with it. You have your protesters, some are peaceful, some a little bit, you know, a little bit more energy, right? Then you have the rioters. You have the rioters who wanted to, who, who can't, who can't say it in a peaceful protest. They can't speak because they're just so frustrated that they have to go, go run and, and just break things out of, out of frustration and, and spray paint. And then you have the looters who want to have, see opportunity, whether this is an opportunity for me to provide for my family. So let me go, let me grab some groceries. Let me grab some shoes. Let me grab some clothes that I couldn't, that I wouldn't be able to get if I can get at this time. And then you have the knuckleheads, the ones who just see opportunity, like, okay, let's go riot. Let's go get a six pack of beer. Let's go, you know what I'm saying? Just take this opportunity to do some stupid stuff. You know, so it's not it's not just a protest. There's things that come along with it. And unfortunately, May 31st, 2020, on a Sunday, I was there earlier getting ready to reopen the dojo because we were phase three during the COVID lockdown. So I had my male students there. We were flipping the mat, just tidying up, just putting the vibe, putting the energy in there to reopen. We had a curfew because of the protests. I told everybody to come go home. I went home. I drove through the protests. My, 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 me and my 92 Wrangler Jeep is through the protests. They didn't, they didn't hit my car. They didn't hit me because they see me. They, they see me and they're like, okay, she's good. You know, <laughs> well, like, well, we can hurt fast, you know, so I got to drive through the protest to get home. 
I'm home with my family, my husband and I, my cubs and I were sitting on the couch flipping channels, just having a regular Sunday night. And I see my building on fire on the news. I didn't want to believe it. I, I rubbed my eyes like, look, okay, what's, what is, is that, is that the corner? Is that, is that seventh and pine? It just, that's not the bill. I'm like, babe, I'm talking to my husband. This, this ain't, this ain't, uh, uh, that's not the dojo, is it? Tell, tell me that's not, the, tell me. And then I'm like, and now, are you still there? Oh, I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just don't want to step okay. on. on the <laughs> this, is, this is intense it's, stuff. I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm having a hard time keeping it together. Please keep going. It's hella intense. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, please don't tell me that's what I see on this here news, that this is not the dojo lit on fire. And, and and I was quiet and my voice started to get loud. Like if my neighbors didn't know me then, they knew me now that night. Cause I'm like, what the did, did I did? Like I just was <laughs> I went, I went completely off. I said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it because what, what the, like I'm still feeling that because I still I'm not I'm not healed I'm not over it okay y'all gotta give me time okay <laughs> wasn't that long yeah. ago <laughs> and I wanted to get over there so bad but I couldn't because there was a curfew and it doesn't matter what I what what my purpose was if I get pulled over they don't know what my purpose was I look like I'm a part of the protest I look like I'm a part of the riot because I am a black woman understand and and for me i was gonna keep going if i got pulled over it was going like i, I was going to if it had to come to something where we or I, I had to resist or keep moving forward it would have been a rumble in that jungle i would have gave these officers a run for their money because i needed to get to the dojo like you can come with me let's go get this together or you're gonna let me you gonna let me go and let me get to where i need to go you understand me so instead of having all that happen I had to pick my battles. And this is a martial arts state of mind. Be mindful. So, quote unquote, I had to stay my ass home. <laughs> so all those things that I just expressed to you would not happen. So I can still be here with my family and not be in jail catching a case. And my, my, my husband and my children wondering where I am and them seeing the dojo on fire like I, I couldn't do it, so I stayed home. Waited till the curfew was over. My brother, he was working a graveyard shift, so he came right to the dojo once you know he was coming off, and he calls me because I. So the whole night though, wait a minute, talk about cleaning. I'm getting every corner of the house that I probably haven't hit. <laughs> like, you know, I couldn't sleep. Of course not, right? I'm just being optimistic. Oh, maybe it's just, you know, the water damage. Let me just, I'll just go to Rite Aid and get some paper towels <laughs> and just, <laughs> maybe it's not that bad. You know, maybe it just smell like a little bit of smoke. Okay, we'll go get a purifier. Like, I'm just, I'm just thinking of the future. Okay, like, oh, it's not that bad. I'll just, you know, my brother calls me and he's like, yo, it's, it's a wrap. It's over. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's over. Like, I'm like, okay, forget the curfew. I'm just, all right, I'm out. I don't care. I don't care. Baby, I love you. Keep your phone on. Da, 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 you know what I mean? And I shoot down over there. I only live about, about 10 minutes away. I get there and it's so quiet. It's, it's, it's quiet to where it was uncomfortable. There was just a, the fire department was only there. There was no police officers. It was just, and it, and it felt like they just finished putting it out. It was really fresh. I, I just stood there and was numb, 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 numb. Just like in disbelief, just hurt, just shocked. Because if you knew the building, this is where I feel like I don't think it was protest. I don't think it was a part of the ride. I don't think it was that at all, because if you knew Long Beach, you would know that this was all a minority owned business owners. Everybody in there was minority owned. OK, we were the only we've been the old, oldest tenants there 25 years. But everybody that was on that strip was a mi minority owned business. So why would you want to do that? if we're going for the purpose of 
police brutality of people of color. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a part of me that's like, yo, somebody took another opportunity and, you know, intercepted with this fire. For what? I still don't know. There's so many theories. You said knuckleheads. Yeah, the knuckleheads came through. Another one is is insurance fraud. Another one is, you know, <laughs> if, if there's, a, there's a development that's come that was being built behind us, you know, that they say and that could have been, there was so, so many theories. And so, so that's why I'm like, and, it's still, and I'm talking to you and my, and my eyes are watering and I'm like, back in that moment, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back to May 31st. I'm back to June, the morning of June 1st being there right now, you know? And it, and it just kills me because I've worked so hard. I've worked, I've worked so hard. I sacrificed so much for the community that to have the, the community burn me down, yo, it was like a slap in the face, you know? A slap in the face with a blade between the fingers slap in the face. Like, y'all just cut me deep, you know? But then it couldn't have been them, or maybe it wasn't them. Like, I'm still, you know, and I, I had to stop thinking about that because I had to figure out ways to move forward. I get closer to the dojo, the glass is broken, debris, like, it's it's foamy. I guess the fire department does, uses foam. Now. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it was it was a lot of foam going on in there. The mat, the mirrors, everything, 25 years, just gone. The, the 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 things that I couldn't that I that are irreplaceable. There's things from from 25 years ago you can't get back. You know, there's there's there was these items that I had from my parents in Brooklyn. Like you know, there's this these you know just little little things that you just can't go replace on Amazon. You know, <laughs> and, life <laughs> 20, 25 years in 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 one school there. There's life there. There are lives there. Yes. And that, speaking of lives, I felt like they were with me. There's, there's been a lot of brothers and sisters in the dojo that have passed on to a higher life, um, including the founder, Dr. Moses Powell. And I felt like at that moment, they were there with me as my ancestors trying to hold me and, and lift me at that moment because I was devastated. And I tried to save what I could, I, I pulling glass and, and moving things. I just tried to do what I, what I could. I got cuts up my hands and things from trying to savor passion. And then I got to remember, it took me a couple of days to, to regroup and get the smoke out off my body and out of my hair, you know. And, and whatever I can save, I put in my Jeep. And then my, I, hear, I see my students start to come in. My students start showing up. They're like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, <laughs> I know, right? Like, I, I had no words to, to, to heal them because I'm their instructor, right? You know, <laughs> at, this, at this time, though, it was like I had, I had no words. I didn't even know what to say. So we all just kind of started trying to get more things. Another student had brought a truck. You know, we just tried to say what we could. I feel like I did what we could uh, a couple hours ago, but I'm like, I guess it's over. I guess, I guess this is it. And so I told everybody, I said, look, we're going to do the creed one last time here. And I'm telling you that closing creed that morning, the last time that we got to say it to the dojo, I like, I felt the floor shake. Like I felt something move, you know what I mean? I don't know, call me crazy, but <laughs> something else was going on at, at that moment because we were all together, the ones who showed up, we were saying it, you know, with the most divine power of emotion that the that the body can do. Because we believe in it. We say it all the time. You know, we we open and we close the dojo with the creed. And I wanted us to close the creed at the dojo for the last time with the fire, crying and, and giving courtesy and respect and giving thanks for allowing us to be there for, for so long of an amount of time. And then I finally went home. I get home, I try to put myself together, take a shower, and then I'm like, you know, I gotta go back there. And my husband's like, but why? I'm like, I don't know, I just gotta go back. <laughs> so I went back. And you know what? 
the whole community is there. Everybody from Long Beach, LA, people like people, everybody's there cleaning up, cleaning up all of our biz, small businesses. The community was with it, forget about COVID. Like we was everybody was so close together, picking up debris, picking up this, putting things away, shifting things aside. Every the whole the love, the love, the love came through. And I knew we were strong, but I didn't know we were that damn strong. Like I came back just to see what I don't know why I came back, but I came back and I see the whole community there. And then I start crying again, like, oh my gosh, you guys. And they gave me an opportunity to save some things that I just said goodbye to a few hours earlier. You understand what I'm saying? They gave me, they gave the community gave me another opportunity, another opportunity to save some more things that I have once that I had just said goodbye to a few hours earlier. My phone is blowing off the hook. I mean, it's literally hot. Like it's literally hot because my phone was getting so many calls. I didn't pick it up because I wasn't in that right mind frame. The random times I did pick it up was my mom, the random time. The other random time I picked up was this lady named Marie Holset from Michigan. I didn't know anybody in Michigan until I met this Marie Hosep. She started to go fund me for me. And it's still open. It's still it's still open. It it came up to like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And I was like, say what now? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm like, is this another opportunity for somebody to crank call me with some BS? Because this is not the time. This is so not the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I didn't believe her at first. I hung up the phone. I kept moving on. I didn't believe her. She called back again. <laughs> another random time. I'm telling you with these random times, I'm not lying. These are some random times I picked up the phone. And it was her. And so then I said, let me, let me, let me breathe. I took a breath and I'm glad I listened to myself. This is when you know you really have to be in tune with yourself because this, this can make or break a situation. And I listened. I said, okay, let me just let me go off into the corner somewhere and take a moment to listen to this woman. And I, I let her talk. I said, okay, she sounds, she sounds legit, you know? <laughs> So I provided her with the information that she needed. So the go the GoFundMe could be transferred um, over to me with my name in it. And there it was. And that's the whole community again, helping me, giving me a second opportunity to now find a new location for us. I want to, I want to connect some dots here, you know, and, and bear with me as I kind of dig back out from, from that emotional blanket you throw over all of us. That that's, that's some intense stuff. And I can only imagine if it's this intense for me hearing it, what it was like to, to experience. You've talked about a few phases in your life. And for me, this, there's this common thread of martial arts showing up in front of you and saying, here's your door. Here you are as, as, as a young girl, you know, 12, 13, somewhere in there. And the world saying, it's time to train. And then your father moving and leaving the school to you and not, I mean, in your words, really not being ready. And martial arts saying, here's the door. Or are you going to go through it? And then again, with COVID and, and, and you went through that door and, okay, we're, we're going to find a way to do this online and do Zoom and, and bring people in. And then, bam, you know, here's, here's the universe seemingly shutting the door and there's another one being put right in front of you. So my, my question is, why do you think that keeps happening? What is it that you're, you know what? I wouldn't ask it this way for very many people, but I'm going to ask it for you because I, I, I've got a feeling it's the right language. What is it you have left to do with martial arts? There, there's, there's something here. Yeah. There's a path and it doesn't seem to matter what gets in the way. Someone, something, somewhere, somehow is saying, you got to keep going. And I can't imagine that you haven't thought of it. Yeah, this no, I have. Like my time is now. So, um, my time is so now. And 
Yeah. There's, Can you talk about there's that? There's times like I was already going through transformation before, like around my before, uh, let's say about a couple years ago. This tran- just transformation. I, I just wanted to be a better woman, a better mother, a better wife. You know, so just things that you do to try to grow yourself and to, to, be, to be at your best, you know. And I think, you know, with that, with me already on the path to be divine, that these were tests in between, you know what I'm saying? And having the arts watch my back. The arts has got my six like no other. I tell you that. You know, the arts, <laughs> it made it it made like it made me it made me feel that I can, I mean, I could never be without it. But now it's like this is like proof this is bona fide proof that the arts has saved my life this is proof that the arts is 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 providing me a path of righteousness into to help the community in another way maybe the universe is telling me that the dojo that we've been in for 25 years is just not big enough anymore and maybe this was the universe saying in this weird way <laughs> that it's time to get something a little bit bigger because I feel like they, they knew that I was not going to leave because it's 25 years of stories mm. and passion and drive and family, you know, like, you know, we, 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 we are where we are. The martial arts has had and will continue to have my back because I have its back. I feel the community has showed up for me because I've always showed up for the community. And I didn't do it to expect anything in return. I did it because I knew it was my purpose in life, was to provide a safe house, a safe haven, and to get these young girls and boys together to get their mindset right before they do end up in jail. And so I felt like it was my duty and it still is my duty that now my new manifestation, manifestation, my new intentions is to now not just have a new dojo, but to have a new temple to provide everything in one block of space for everyone. Yes, the martial arts adding yes with the yoga, adding yes with the dancing, adding yes with the acting, fashion, um, you know, uh, buildings, everything that I feel everyone can use for long life skill. Some things you can't learn in college. Some things you can't. Some things you just need to get your hands dirty. Some some things just, you know, you don't have college money. You don't have scholarship. It's a community-based planting, food, learning how to grow. All these things since since the fire has opened up another portal for me to want to do more for the community. And martial arts has helped me see that because it's had my back because I have theirs. Does that make sense? It does. It does. I I, I get that statement in a way that that I don't know that I would have a few years ago, mm. you know, with, with what I do with the show, with whistle kick, um, I have put everything I have into, as you put it, having the martial arts back and I will defend it and advocate for it and help to spread it in the way that I know how, mm. just as you are, just as so many listening and so many who have been on the show before have. Yeah. It's interesting that you you use the word temple because the some of the words that were kind of coming to mind as as you've been talking today have been that I'm not the only one and I I knew I wasn't the only one and I know that there are plenty of us out there who see this this evolution and this next I almost want to call it golden age of martial arts coming in the next 10 to 20 years. Mm. And so for you to use the word temple just kind of makes me smile because martial arts, 
you know, in a, in a non-religious way becomes almost religious to so many of us. We become so passionate and so invested. Yeah, it's, in a pursuit that it's, not, that, it's not religious, but it, it's very spiritual. You know, there's yeah, certain things that's, that that's you can't put, put it. it on. There's certain things you can't put on the flyer for marketing in the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and, and these are things that come along while you're in the dojo learning for us, learning San Lucas Ru Jiu Jitsu, learning self defense, learning self love, self confidence. Like, those are things that come that we can't put on the flyer, but your, your spirit grows when you grow, you know? And for me, I've never thought to call it the temple either. We've always, call, always called it the dojo. And then sometimes you, you can feel, oh, so where you at? Oh, I'm at this gym. I'm like, oh, gym. Oh, when y'all start calling it a gym? Like, huh? You know? <laughs> oh, you know. No, I don't know. Like, explain because where I come from, we come from the old school. You know what I'm saying? And, and and the traditional martial arts will always be around forever. Like, I believe in that truly because look, it's still here now. But I'm not sure about the new things that are coming along. I don't know if it's going to stick or it's going to be a phase or, you know. And I respect all arts, martial arts. I respect martial science. I respect you know other sports and i need everybody to understand the difference between everything not everything belongs in the same category and i think once we all understand the different categories of the arts there'll be more respect for them all as well and so having this temple will provide the knowledge to have people understand because i feel like if i can get other instructors from all walks of life that can explain their truth as to why they do what they do and why they do it do your children train they do they do they do they're purple belts now in our system and how's that going is that giving you flashbacks to being a kid no because i, I found a, a lighter way <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not just coming up behind them in the house and and Putting moves down yeah, on them. you know, I, I give them their their element of surprises, <laughs> of course, yes. You know, but I tried to find a little lighter way as to how I was uh, raised into it. You know, to show them something. You know, if they're they're a good time. They're they're mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful creatures. My husband and I created. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how about your husband? Does he train? He does not train, but he can go for it if he needs to. He he's he's a bear. He's a bear. He's quiet and chilled and can, until he can't be no more. He's actually a, a behavioral specialist for the school district here in Long Beach, and okay. so he works more with the mind of children, you know. And and so that's that's his his martial science of it, I guess you can say, of his art, you know. And what were his thoughts? Because I'm sure, if you don't mind sharing, as you've worked through these these challenges with the universe seeming to destroy what you'd invested so much of, of your time and what your father invested so much time in, and as you work through that emotionally and, of course, physically, logistically, did he have any perspective on that? He did. He really just wanted to be there for me to to cry on to be held you know because some things you just can't speak something sometimes you just need to just <laughs> let it out in other ways you know i wanted to punch a hole through the wall like he stopped me from doing that like he was there <laughs> <laughs> he was there for those things you know <laughs> he, he he's very supportive you know he he helped explain to the children, you know, why you see mommy crying. And, mm. You know, because this changes, this changes all of our lives, you know? And it, I mean, you, I mean, it's still raw. It's still raw, but um, I am getting better. I'm stages of healing, like I say, you know, because it's just the truth. Right now I, I have us over at a park teaching now that they have lifted us to that we could be outside the governor lifted us that we can be outside and so i took the opportunity for us to be together again because we haven't seen each other since march you, you know what i mean so it's like we got the covid break and then we had the arson <laughs> so it's like you know what else let me just bring it bring it <laughs> 
what what was that first outside class? It like? was so majestic. It was so majestic. I loved it. Everybody came out who could because mind be mindful. We're still in a COVID. We're still in the pandemic. Excuse me. That some some parents did st- are still in the house now. Like they have not been outside because they know their body or they really are scared. I mean, like this is real. Whether y'all think of it or not, whatever's going on with what happened the other day with. Um, the president getting the look people have died okay that's not people have died so we cannot dismiss this pandemic it is happening this real life whether it was created on purpose or whatever was the, 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 whatever okay <laughs> people are dying so that's facts and people are scared and that's another fact so the ones who came out we all had our mask on. I had sanitizer. I still do. Every time I go out, I have an extra mask. I have sanitizer. I bring water. Like I, I do the best that I can to, to make sure we're all okay. We social distance work out. Everybody spread it out. And it's such a good vibe because we're all back together again. It's like a reunion. And that first time, I was crying. I'm like, oh my God, I've never cried so much in my life. Like, what is going on? <laughs> because they don't understand as students, they they inspire me. They bring me, they they bring me up. Like, why would I keep doing what I'm doing for nobody? Like you, I'm doing this for you guys, you know. So just to see you guys, you know, gives me the the lift that I needed to keep going. You know, the little kids, professor, professor, look, I, I drew, I drew, I drew what the dojo should look like now. Look, you should have, a, you should have next year house. And then, no, 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 she should have it over here, right here where we are at the beach. Just build the building right here, professor. No, 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 no. We're going to, I mean, these are the little, the little warriors having a full on discussion. <laughs> I love it. On how and where and, and how it should be made. And that, oh my gosh. Like that was so. What's better than that? That was. Kids, kids only get into discussions like that about things that really matter to them. It so mattered, and just to see them, oh. like it's so. Oh, yeah, oh. It's so. Oh, it's so beautiful. And powerful. Yes, and powerful because these little people are so innocent, and they tell you the truth. The kids, you want to know something? Ask the child. <laughs> Because they'll tell you really what's going on. <laughs> and you have to listen Truth. to the little people, okay? They have emotions too. And I think that's why we we click so much because I let them speak. I let them, I let them let it, I let them express. I let them tell me what's on their mind, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it's just beautiful. And the adults being there too, you know, I teach men, women, adults, I teach everybody. You know, and they're very supportive. They're like, I can't wait till it happens. Let us, okay, we're going to go, we getting our tools all set up. We ready, you know, you know, to do the renovations into the new place. You know, like it's, it's great. And I just hope um, manifesting good intentions into having a new location as, as soon as possible. And when time permits, I don't, I, again, I've never been in this position. I don't want to mess it up. You know, I really want to do good by us and I don't want to be rushed, but I know we have to have one soon because it's going to get cold. What's going to get Cali cold? I know over there in New England. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm thinking, mm, pretty sure a warm day here right now is a cold day for you in the middle of winter. So right. I'm not I'm not really sure how I feel about yeah. calling that cold, but yeah. all right. It's, I mean, it's all relative, right? It's fair. It's relative. Right. That's why I'm glad I said Cali cold. If it's Cali cold, <laughs> like we can still be in flip flops and it's like December. You know, I, I, I've done that actually. So, <laughs> so yeah, I just want to be able to hopefully get one before it gets a little chilly over here. And if not, then I'm just going to have to keep keep on keeping on until we find the right place for us because once i get this place you know hopefully me speaking it into existence i want to be able to purchase something this time Mm -hmm. and and i want to be able to leave my family a legacy so that's why it's very imperative that i really go off more logically and not emotionally 
with these decisions. And that's helped me realize that through my martial art. <laughs> Going back to kind of the, the question that I posed, these doors. On the other side of each of those doors, you know, there, there are circumstances that changed, but it's clear that you've also changed. Oh. You're, you're mid-door right now, right? You're stepping through that. You're stepping into something on the other side. Yes, my, I'm halfway in between dimensions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Now, if we were to come back together in another year, two, five, something like that, and we were to talk about this this stage that you're entering, this new dimension for your, your life, your training, your, your school, what do you hope you would be able to say about that transition and how it changed you? It changed, I would be able to say that it changed me for the better. The change was supposed to happen. Everything happens in divine order at divine time and to accept it and ride with it and have fun on the way. <laughs> and always be in gratitude. Always be there. Whether you think, why would I be giving things to a, a fire? Why would I? This was horrible. No, 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 no. Look at it in another way. Now look what's happening. I get rid. I can have the opportunity to find us a new location that's actually that might be bigger and that might I could be able to provide a lot more for us than just Sanukis Ruju Jitsu. You know, like this is a this was a good fire. <laughs> what? Yeah. So you think about it. <laughs> I, I had to ask myself that just now. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, five years from now, I hope that, you know, we are settled into a, a new temple of raw life defense. That's my uh, my logo. That's what I've become, like raw life defense, which is a Sanuka Shru Jiu-Jitsu system. And... Um, Hopefully I'll be able to leave a legacy. You know, I think that I am right now. I think I think even before the fire, before the pandemic, like I said, transformation and transitions were happening. Um, that just put a little bit more oomph behind the situation. <laughs> and I I feel like it's I feel like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be respectful. And it's going to be available to everyone in need, to everybody who's interested, to everyone who just wants to try something new. Who knows? You know, because you never know why people take martial arts. Some cats take it. Oh, I just love, I just love the art. I just love watching it. I just love watching all the Kung Fu flicks and whatnot. Some take it, oh, it's just a hobby just to keep myself in shape or to stay out of, stay out of trouble or oh, I just like kicking and punching. Some do it because they need their lives to be safe. Some are doing it really for the self-defense so they don't get raped again. So they don't, this doesn't happen. Carjacking that, you know, things like this don't happen again. Or you have the ones who don't want those things to happen to prevent it. So they're trying to get ahead of the game. You know, like everybody has their own different avenue as to why they want to do it. And, and I always ask them, so what's your purpose? What, what you want from it? Like what's going on? You know, so, oh, oh, you, yeah, why not ask? I just want to know. Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Just so I know what, so I can know what to provide for you, you know? Like, are we going to be sitting in a horse stance doing punches or do I need to show you how to slice and dice real quick? You know, like, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What, what if people want to find you online, website, social media, anything like that that you're willing to yes, share? Yes, sir. Um, I am on Instagram as Professor Zahelia or at Zahelia, Z-A-H-A-L-E-A. I am on Facebook as Professor Zahelia Anderson. My email is Professor Zahelia 7th for 7th Don. I am currently a 7th Don in the system. And that was, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, going to have to do a part two if we're doing that one. I got a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my email is Professor Zahelia 7 at gmail.com. And I, I promote um, us being out in the park. Like I'm like starting over. So I'm doing a lot of 
you know, marketing and just trying to get myself out there again. And, and just, um, I do Zooms. I've, I've been doing webinars. I've been doing a realty seminars uh, via Zoom. So if anybody would like to learn some information on how to use a pen that is just not for writing, then you can come and mm -hmm. I will show you how to use that pen. <laughs> right on. And we've, we've, we've been all over the place today. We've talked about some great stuff. And it's been a ride for sure. And so now it's time to, to wrap that up for the audience. So what, what are your final words? What do you want to say to everybody who's been listening today? I just want to give thanks to everyone who took the opportunity to listen, you know, and hopefully took the opportunity to listen with no judgment. Um, I personally don't judge anyone because I already know what my life has done. <laughs> And, I, and I'm a good listener and I'm here for it. I just hope that it's given in return. And I hope you enjoyed a little truth about myself and my family and the dojo and the community of over here in California, Long Beach. And hopefully we'll be able to see and meet in the future. And to keep practicing, keep training, training, train, train hard. <laughs> I promised you a story, a great story. And thank you to Professor Anderson for delivering an amazing story. We finished recording about a half hour ago, and I'm still feeling emotional about it. I had to take some time before recording this because of how I felt. If you're listening to the show, martial arts is important to you. It's a powerful part of many of our lives. If you're an instructor, especially a school owner, if you know what it's like to invest so much of who you are and what you have into that physical space with the goal of passing on what you've learned, what's impacted your life, I'd say there's a pretty good chance you got emotional too as you heard this story. But I want to point out that the theme of this story today of Professor Zahelia's life as a martial artist, was not one of difficulty or pain or anything like that. It's about remaining faithful. It's about recognizing that adversity passes if you're willing to work through it. That was my takeaway. This one meant a lot to me, and I hope it did for you. So, Professor, thank you for coming on. Thank you for being so open and trusting us with your story. If you want to check out photos and links, the things that we've talked about today, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You're going to find the show notes there. Every episode has a page all to itself with the links and, and all that. Eventually a transcript that comes out usually a few weeks after. But we get them up there. And if you want to support us, the work that we're doing, you've got some options. You can make a purchase at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code podcast15 to save 15%. Or leave a review, buy a book on Amazon, or help out with our Patreon account, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And if you see somebody out there wearing someone whistlekick on it, make sure you say hello. That's a fellow martial artist. Introduce yourself. We're all in this together. If you've got guest suggestions, maybe topic suggestions, or just general feedback, let me know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 